Hello everybody out there on YouTube. This is Book777 here on YouTube, and I'm going to be bringing to you some interesting comments by user name Marlent. I hope you enjoy it, as much as I actually enjoyed reading them and having a ball about them. The church never charged for forgiveness is another made-up bit of nonsense. Well, you don't know who John Tetzel is? Apparently not. Apparently willful ignorance. By the way, read his self-contradiction, and I'm going to reload the uh, web page, but I'm going to read to you what he said. The church never charged to forgive sins, another made-up bit of nonsense. Show the proof. That's right. You can't. You just made it up. Marlet. Here's what John Tetzel used to say. As soon as a coin in a coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Here's another quote from Marlet. By the way, the church agreed with Luther on the so-called sale of indulgences, so he's admitting to the existence of indulgences done by a few priests. Uh, question that at the time and call them heretics. A little history you seem to forget, Marlon. My comment. So you first say they never charge indulgences, then you admit to them doing it. Self contradiction. And you can see in these um, comments. In fact, I think one of the comments he said, and I'm going to read that to you, it said that indulgences were not for the forgiveness of sins, and they call people stupid for believing that. Interesting how Wikipedia has something else to say about that. Did any of these people like to read Wikipedia? What it said on the subject? Wikipedia said it was for the remission of sins. And I'm going to read to you that quote in a little bit, as soon as I find that statement he said. Yep, man who claims he has it right. Claims he knows what he's talking about. Here's some interesting stuff. Pay money to forgive sins only in the minds of an SDA devil. The church never charged to forgive sins. Well, that is false. And I hope you just go back there, pause it, look at that, and you can see, yeah, he did say this. Just in case he goes back and deletes it later, just like Bengali. They both like to delete their own comments and block people from the comments they posted. It's kind of interesting, though, that he thinks that they never did this. You're going to find Wikipedia says otherwise. Find money to forgive sins on the mind of SDA devil. I read that already. There's another comment. He said that um, the SDA... No, there's a comment to somebody. He said it wasn't for the forgiveness of sins at all. Now, I'm on the Wikipedia site for the indulgence. I'm going to read to you what it says. It's quite um, an indulgence. It's for the Whoa, 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 come on. Is for the full or partial... That's nice to know. Okay, is the full or partial remission of temporal punishment due for sins which have already been forgiven. How the heck does that make any sense? An indulgence in Catholic theology is for the full or partial remission of temporal punishment due for the forgiveness of sins. Basically, you're being charged for the sins that you have committed correct? This is for your salvation. Yes, there is a temporal punishment. And they're saying, you need to pay money for it. You need to pay money to have your sins remitted. To basically have your punishment remitted. Basically, the punishment for your sins. It's kind of not remitted temporally. Now, here I am on Encyclopedia Britannica, which if you get a library card, you can access it through the internet. And I'm going to type in the word indulgences and see what I come up with. Indulgences. All right. There it goes. Indulgences. And ta! I mean, it's just as annoying as the voices in that video. Indulgence. There we go. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to read to you what it says. And you're going to find out something very shocking not at all appalling to any true gospel-believing Christian. A distinctive feature of the penitential system of both the Western and Medieval and the Roman Catholic Church, they are granted full or partial remission of the punishment of sin. The granting of indulgences was predicted on two beliefs. First, in the sacrament of penance, it did not suffice to have the guilt culpa of sin forgiven through absolution. No, one also needs to undergo temporal punishment. Which means the blood of Jesus Christ does not actually save you because it's not enough. You must be punished. And so they say it's not for the 
forgiveness of sins? Uh, that's not true. It is too. And you can say whatever he wants, but no. Hello, YouTubians. This is Spoke7777. I hope you enjoyed the little screenshots. And I want to thank RUSA2 for telling me about the program Camp Studio. It's a little frustrating to use, though. So I have to say, now, here's an interesting book. Reformation in Germany. Oh, a little side note. Do you know the Catholic Church had slavery? You should see my video where I talk about the Catholic Church and slavery. It's kind of interesting. Oh, well, I wonder. I'm going to read to you a section from this to show that Mart Luff has no idea what he's talking about. On page 11, the Pope John the Twelfth, from 1316 to 1334 belongs the credit or discredit of creating for the papacy a machinery for gathering in money for its support. His situation rendered this almost inevitable. On his ascension, he found himself with an empty treasury. On, yeah, an empty treasury. So you get he has no money, basically. He had to incur debts in order to live. He had to provide for a costly war with the uh, Visconti. Apparently, he's a guy who likes war. And he had to leave money to enable his successors to carry out his temporal policy. Few popes lived so plainly. His money getting was not for personal luxury, but for the supposed requirements of the papal policy. He was the first pope who systematically made the dispensation of grace temporal and eternal a source of revenue. Here too, hitherto, interesting word, the charges made by the papal chancellery had been ostensibly at least for actual work done fees for clerking and registration and so on. John made the fees proportionate to the graces dispensed or to the power of the recipient to pay. He and his successors made the tithes, the annates, procurations, fees for the bestowment of the pallium and the medi fructus subsidies and dispensations, regular sources of revenue. And this is from this book. And you want to see it? Let me read that again. Systematically made the dispensation of grace temporal and eternal a source of revenue. So that shows you that Martloff doesn't know what he's talking about. The Catholic Church did sell indulgences for the forgiveness of sins. They said, well, your sins have been forgiven, but you need to be punished. Mm, well, then you're really not forgiven. Doesn't that make any sense? Okay, let me tell you something. If somebody is going to be punished and whipped for breaking the law back then, has a person been forgiven? No. Not until after he's been punished. Then he's forgiven. But they're saying, oh, do this and your sins will be forgiven. So he is dispensing grace because they don't believe that the atoning blood of Jesus is enough to cover for your transgressions, which is a Catholic heresy, and they need to repent of this. This is fraud. The Bible has a lot to say about something. One of the apostles got angry. I think it was Peter. At a guy, well, tell me how you uh, do all this, and you're going to try to make money off of the gospel? Yeah, you'd be a curse for that one. This is Spoke777 here on YouTube, and I hope this video shows to you that the silly little contradictions and mouthing off of Adventist haters and bashers who willfully and stubbornly resist the truth here on YouTube. And good night, and God bless you. Spoke777.